as a boy, Joseph Hardy Nizamo used to think a great deal about religion, but it was not the true religion, for he did not know anything about it. His parents taught him from boyhood to pray to the idol gods made by hands and to worship the spirits of his ancestors, his grandfathers and grandmothers ever so far back. He often went with them to the graveyards to pray to these spirits. Sometimes the little boy would rise very early and go to a temple three and a half miles away and pray to the idols, coming back in time for breakfast. Of course, it did him no good, but he did the best he knew and kept on bravely without minding how hard it was. Nizama was 10 years old when Commodore Perry of the United States came sailing into the Bay of Yedo with a message to the Emperor from our President, and the closed doors of Japan that had long been shut against foreigners were first pushed open to open wider by and by. Nizama was much stirred up over the coming of the Commodore. He wished above everything to become a brave soldier and fight for his country. The ten-year-old boy went off into the temple of the god of war and asked him to make him a good soldier ready to fight. But one day he read the saying of a Chinese writer who showed that one could become a braver man by studying books which would help him to conquer thousands than by practicing with a sword which could only kill one man at a time. Nizuma decided that he would stop sword practice and study books. So he did and with all his might. Sometimes he did not go to bed till after cock crowing in the morning, but it showed how earnest he was. He began to study the Dutch language and sometimes ran away from the office where he was to take his lesson with the Dutch master, after which he was beaten more than once by order of the prince. Time went on and Nizma was 15. About this time he borrowed some Chinese books to read. He opened one of them and read the first sentence. It was, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The boy had often asked his parents who made him and who made all things. They could not satisfy him with their answers. This sentence seemed an answer. He said to himself, God made all things. God made me. I must be thankful to him and obey him. I must pray to him. As he said afterwards from this time, his mind was fulfilled to read the English Bible and burned to find some missionary or teacher to make him understand. But he waited and watched six years in darkness, not finding anyone to tell him about the Christian's God, although praying all the time to this unknown being. When he was 21, Nizma asked leave to go to Hekorote, but he was refused and flogged besides for merely asking. But at last he got away safely, telling his mother he would be gone a year. It would be ten years before he came back. While in Hecordate, he made up his mind to go to America to find the Christian's God. If a Japanese was found trying to leave his country, he was put to death in those days. But a friend rode Nizuma out to a ship at midnight and he got on board. There, the captain hid him so that the officers who came next morning, looking for stowaways, did not discover him. Arriving in Shanghai, the young man took passage for Boston. The ship was owned by a merchant named Alpheus Hardy. God guided the youth to him to find out about God. Mr. Hardy took him into his own home and for ten years gave him the best education to be had anywhere. After some years, Nizuma took his stand for Christ by uniting with the church. After he graduated from Amherst College, he entered Andover Theological Seminary. After graduating from the Theological Seminary, Nizuma was made a member of the Japanese Mission of the American Board, and Mr. Hardy undertook his support. Nizuma's great desire now was to found a Christian college in Japan. The first speech he ever made before the board put him all in a tremble, so that he could not do anything but pray by way of preparation. But when the time came, he had such a feeling for the people of his country that he said of himself, I shed much tears instead of speaking for them, and before I closed my speech, less than 15 minutes long, about $5,000 was subscribed on the spot. 
When Nishimo went back to Japan in 1874, he found great changes everywhere. A new calendar, the Sabbath made a holiday, newspapers being printed, an army and navy created, a mint established, lighthouses, railways, telegraphs, and other new things in operation in the country. The young graduate was offered a high position by the government, but kept steadfastly to his purpose and founded the Christian college, which was called the Doshija, meaning One Endeavor Company. It was founded in Kyoto with eight students in the beginning. Of the first 178 who graduated in 17 years, all but about 10 were Christians. In 25 years, 4,611 students entered, and of the 936 graduates, 147 engaged in teaching and 95 preached the gospel. For six years, the work was hard, but Nizuma never wavered. Prosperity came at last and large gifts for the institution. But finally, the founder's health gave way. The doctor said he might live several years more if he would rest for two years, but the brave man decided to do what he could while life lasted and kept on in weakness and pain laboring for his beloved college. He died on January 23, 1890, with the words, Peace, Joy, Heaven on his lips. 3,000 people followed his body to its resting place. The workman dies, but the work goes on.